Handle Your High with Teddy Yoshi. All right, welcome back to Handle Your High with me, Teddy Yoshi, and I have my good buddy uh, Nigel Lomax here with me. We're going to talk about the Arnold Classic in a lot of the divisions there, and I guess and inappropriate because you're going to be my helper at the Arnold as you were at the Olympia, um, and so we're going to be covering that for the NPC News Online. But uh, today we're going to talk a little about some of the competitors, and, and I, I have to admit, you know, even though I'm a judge, even though I'm an industry uh, guy, I'm a little weak on some of the classes because there's so many great competitors, and I don't always remember all the names. But Nigel, you always seem to have. I'm not like Dave Palumbo; like he can go to these shows. And he remembers everybody's fucking name and like where they competed and shit. And uh, I don't, I have to get pictures in front of me to refresh my memory on some of them. And some of these guys and gals, I don't remember because I was, I, you know, because there's so many pros now. So, but you seem to have your, you seem to have your finger on the tack of the whole industry, it seems like. I, I will be good until probably the women. The <laughs> women are a little, you know, there's a lot of them too. And Fitness International might I might have to muddle through Fitness International just because you don't see you right. know uh, well, we'll, the fitness we'll, girls we'll, except for twice a year you know yeah we'll cover the we'll, we'll cover the basics uh, because I think the the ones that everybody wants to hear about is really like well the first one everybody wants to hear about is the open <laughs> class um, and we're not we don't even have a two twelve class this year no uh, so no. that's unfortunate that's unfortunate but yeah. But it's going to be pretty good. I mean, I'm looking at the list. I have it I'm, uh, right in front of me. I'm looking at the list, and there's, it looks really good. And one of the guys that usually falls into the two tw- the two twelve, he's moving up. Our, our you and your friend and mine, and who you get mistaken for often, uh, <laughs> our, our friend Charles Dixon, the tank. I, I'm not going to be mistaken for him during this event because. I, one, he looks really good, and two, he looks humongous. Even though I think he's still given away like 20 pounds to everybody else but he never looks he like looks it. great though. He, yeah, yeah. He, he you know he really doesn't look like it um he and, and I, it was always my uh not criticism my suggestion in previous years because i know tank too and and he's a great guy and i've always suggested look man you're gonna look better smaller smaller and he would try to push down and i think he just may look better actually when he's heavier yeah he, you know him and i we've always you know talked back and forth and a couple of years ago, I convinced him to go under 212, you know, in, you know, for weigh-ins and stuff like that. And it worked for him for, um, you know, for the Arnold 212 last year because he came in second. But I think that the look that he has right now um, is is a lot better. I, I like it a lot better. It would surprise me if he was a, if he was around 220. He might be even less than 220. He might be about 215. So, I don't I don't think he's that far up, you know. Well, now I, know. The, I saw some pictures, and it looks like, and this was just a couple weeks ago. Uh, you shared some with me, one with me uh, we, that we kept private, but um, right. uh, that was just, I think it was like a back shot or something. Yep. Um, he didn't want to leak anything out. Um, he didn't want to leak anything out. Uh, he would be <laughs> <laughs> uh, but there was uh, to me it looked like <laughs> to me some of the criticisms I've had is that his waist gets a little blocky right um, and so it didn't look like that no no I mean I, I think they did a great job they from what I've you know what I've understood from some of his training videos and everything him and Monique he's been uh, training a little bit with Monique you know of course he trades with uh, Trey Hodge and everything like that but Monique has given him a couple of different training um, techniques and everything, and he's been incorporating that. And uh, so it's interesting. I think he's trying some new things. That's how you and, change. And I, I think that that is changing his body <laughs> very well, and he's keeping that midsection. He's not doing as much cardio, believe it or not, um, that he normally does. Oh, he's really? Doing less cardio. Yeah. So, which is interesting because he looks a lot tighter. And I know that he used to do cardio, like, yeah. you know, the last couple of weeks, like well, hours of cardio and stuff like that. Well, so I, I, just, yeah, so, I so, just think his body looks better. Maybe his body just naturally carries more weight to, and looks better, you know, carrying more weight well, and it's, more muscle. Yeah, it's quite possible. Or just, or it could be just, I mean, there's also sometimes when you try to force the body down farther than it's going to go, then it re- resists. And so you end up having sort of um, there being some there's, there could be some residual stuff. Now he may just I don't know what his diet's like. I don't know what he naturally his natural inclinations are when he eats. But oftentimes when some guys try to push down, you know they're they're eliminating some of the foods that they normally eat in in, in more volume, like start the starchy stuff specifically. And then when you eliminate that, if you do have the kind of weight he's carrying, they oftentimes get hungrier. And so they right. eat, they're eating more vegetation, they're eating more protein sometimes. And so uh, that, that could cause the waistline to do some funny things, especially towards the end. 
And if you're, and it, my suspicion is that oftentimes I talked about this in one of my Instagram lives, that when you, when people diuresis real hard for a show, it's man. When you take diuretics and you and you water leaves the system, the first thing that happens is people get constipated. Right. True. And, and so they get, you know, there's. You're gonna look. You are, and and those subtle changes will look different on stage because uh, they they get blown out of proportion. Like you, one a quarter of an inch difference on your waistline could look radically different on stage. Oh could, yeah. So yeah. So maybe there's some something to be said that him following his body's natural weight line where it wants to be for the show is gonna do him better just from that perspective. And his uh, he's a big dude, so uh, he's huge. Yeah. So, so he may get the extra inches in his shoulders, and it may look as make his waist look even smaller. I think I, I I think that I think he'll be in the top six. I I'm hope gonna so. Go that far. I, okay. Yeah, I'm gonna, well, I'm here, gonna go that far to well, say the, that I think he's gonna be in the top six. Well, the list that I have here, I'm gonna mention the the ones that the the top guys. Uh, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen guys. Looks like. Um, yeah. So we got uh, Lionel Baiki, William Bonick, uh, Raphael, Brandon Curry. <coughs> Um, uh, Charles Dixon, of course, um, uh, Steve Kuklo, or Kuchlo, as you say, as the proper way to pronounce it, Josh Linovitz, L- Linovitz, uh Victor Martinez, Cedric McMillan, Luxano, uh, Mikhail Volkin, Volkin, yep, um, Akeem, Akeem Williams, and Rolly Winkler. Now, great list for this show, in my opinion. Right. It's going to be a really tough show because there's a lot of really great guys. Um, so he, Charles is in the mix there. That it's a big list. I'm going to give you my prediction. You can tell me what you think. Um, okay. And that's and again, this is just based on his history and based on what I can kind of see going on. But I don't see what the, the a lot of these guys are hiding stuff these days. They, everybody doesn't want to be out there showing their goods. If it was me, I would be showing my goods every day because I want you know I really I would because I would I want everyone to know. You want the judges to know. You want your competitors to know. Um, there's nothing. I'm not hiding nothing. There's nothing. You know, I mean, that's, that's just my philosophy. I'd right. want, I'd want, right. I, I would want that kind of momentum going into a show, uh, but but everyone's their own. Uh, I really, um, I really kind of have. I really think that when the push comes to shove in this lineup, if everyone's, uh, uh, I, I I I think Brandon Curry. Uh, I like Brandon Curry. I like Cedric Millen, and I like Rolly Winkler. These are the top three guys in my opinion. I still I think Steve Kuklo could be up there too. Um, but and William Bonick, of course, William Bonick. But William Bonick loses, but he, he loses the size, he loses the, yeah. the stature, and so while he can do it, absolutely, there's no doubt, because you know when people stand next to each other, sometimes that stuff gets equalized. Um, but if everyone's at their best, 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 I, I'm kind of thinking that Roly Winkler's got so much momentum right now that that that's what I would predict to win. But who would I want to win? Uh, Brandon Curry. Okay, so. I don't have Cedric in in that top three. I don't really have Cedric in the top five, just based on the way that he looked last year. Right. I don't, and I think that this like I think this event is is a harder event, um, and one of the reasons why is I think that all of these guys can come in condition, and Cedric never really comes in condition. The one time that he did come in condition, he almost beat Kai Green, but to me, even when he won the Arnold. He wasn't in great condition to me. I mean, he was okay, but he, he wasn't the best, um, you know, Cedric I've ever, you know, we've seen. But uh, if I were going to go with, uh, I'm going to go with top five. So I'm going to go with Roly Winkler. Uh, I'm going to go with Brandon Curry. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, William Bonick. I'm going to go with uh, Josh and, uh, and Charles and uh, Lionel Bonecki, actually. Okay. <clears throat> well, he's and a... and my winner is going to be uh, Roly Winkler, even though uh, I I, I flip flop between Curry and Roly. And the reason why I flip flop between Curry and Roly is I saw Roly. You and I saw Roly up close and personal at at the Olympia, and he was lights out. He looked great. If he's like maybe two percent better. It, 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 it's it's over even for Sean. I mean, he just looked that good to me. But I've seen some. I haven't seen any pictures since. But I've seen some pictures of Brandon Curry. Oh man, and I saw wow. Some yeah. <laughs> I mean, he looks great. You know, and it's the same thing with Bonnick. I saw a back picture of Bonnick. He looks spot on. You know, so but 
I, I, you know, that's one of the reasons why I teeter between Curry or Roly. Either one would not make me sad if they won, because I like them both. You know, they both have. You know, the the great thing about Ro- the reason why I like Roly is because he's just a freak. He's just freaky. But the great thing that I, about Brandon is you get the best of both worlds. You get a very nice aesthetic freaky. This yeah. about him so you know i'm not going to be mad at the judges if they, they <laughs> you know they, they give it to curry in other words so i'll tell you on this list i kind of i would agree um i oh, really wait. my dark my dark horse would be akeem williams because i saw some pictures of him and he looks outstanding too you know this is kind of like where we we get to sit here and, and sort of uh, play judge for a little bit and uh in the show and, and kind of make our guesses but at the end of the day i always like to r- remind myself that you know when people stand next to each other when they're at a show, so things could change really fast. So this is just, you know, this is just just based on on uh, on guesses and based on what we think might happen. So because in because in, we're several of these guys, just like you kind of mentioned, Roly and Curry and and uh, and of course uh, Cedric as well as um, uh, Bonic, especially when you, when you throw Bonic in there, it's hard to tell sometimes because we're really cutting hairs here because the difference between first, second, third, fourth probably in this in this show is really small. Oh, yeah. And, uh, I mean, it, it, if Cedric comes in shredded, he'll win. Yeah. Definitely. He just has to come in shredded and very complete, and he'll win. That That's the only reason, and no hate for Cedric, that's the only reason why I don't have him winning and, and I don't needs, have him in the top six. And I think he needs it. Like, all great competitors uh, in this sport, they need, they need to have a wow factor, and that could be in right. their physique. But they also need to have a personality. You need to be able to communicate that kind of presence on stage. And Cedric is a little weak in that. So is Brandon, which is what right. which holds him back. He's getting better. Uh, Cedric has gotten better. Um, William Bonick, he, he's got a great personality on stage. Right. He, he knows how to project. Um, so and Rolly's made huge, vast improvements. Oh yeah. Um, so they've. So this will be an interesting one because all these guys in my book. All still have several years ahead of him, with the exception of, with the exception of Cedric, um, who probably has the least amount of time left in his career. In my opinion, this is just a my opinion, because um, I think these are guys who are hitting their stride, and uh, like Winkler and Curry, and uh, they're they're hitting their stride, you know, and um, and Bonick, and they and this is where they're starting to really shine. Guys like Mar- Victor Martinez, his he really hit it, you know. In, Probably 2008, 2007. <laughs> really missed this right. opportunity to really. Um, one of the guys here on this list who I've always liked and who I've always, have thought was probably one of the best genetically gifted bodybuilders that the sport's ever seen is that is Lionel Baiki. I love this yep. guy. I think that if there, if I was going to look like one of these guys, this is the guy whose physique I would want to look like. I mean, he just has never been able to put it together in a way that would impress the judges. He seems to get lost in the crowd. and But when you see him one-on-one or you see him uh, uh, by himself, all right, all right, sorry about that technical difficulties. We're back Mr. Lomax here and his dead battery. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we were talking about Lionel Bikey, I think. Um, yeah, one of the guys who I really, really admire, I think he's got superior genetics, really, really, but he doesn't seem to be able to put it together uh, uh, for the shows in the most complete way. I mean, any other pro show, he should be able to go and do really very, very well, uh, but he doesn't seem to be able to put it together, and part of it, I remember talking with DJ uh, some years ago when he was coaching him, and he, he swore the guy wasn't uh, wouldn't uh, stay on his diet, and that's what he thought, why he couldn't, but I don't know if that's completely the case. I saw some pictures recently, he looked pretty good, I, I I, I don't know how he's going to do. He's the only weakness I see in his physique is that his his back lacks some depth, um, right? And so and 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 I don't really like the way that he poses very well. So there's a presentation issue, I think. Um, so I but he certainly has one of the best physiques out there. I mean, just pretty. It's just pretty to my book. So well, I I think it's also it's his back and his his hamstrings. So when he's in the when you see him from the front, you're like he beats everyone right. from the front. But when he turns around, it's kind of like the front and the back don't match. Right. <laughs> so that you know, I I don't know if that's a diet problem though. Um, you know, I I've heard all sorts of theories behind it. You know, I, I did hear that he he doesn't stay on his diet, and uh, I know he's been working with George Farah or he. He had been working with George Farah. I don't know if he's still working with George Farah. Yeah, I don't know either. But, but um, I don't think it really has anything to do with his diet. I think it might have something to do with his training. You know, 
but I but you don't know how he trains because I've never seen really I've never seen a video of him training, so I have no idea how he trains. Oh, okay. Well, you know. Well, so, um... but you're right, Lionel Benecki. Out of all of them, <clears throat> I mean, to me, he has the most genetic talent. He just doesn't out of he's... all of those guys on you know on that on that list. Well, he um. I just really appreciate his physique, he's, and he seems, and he's a really nice guy. Like he, he's a very spiritual guy. I know that um, his, his posts always seem to be um, spiritually motivated. Uh, he gives a lot of thanks, and which is wonderful. And I think he's got, and and, he, and I've spoken with him. He has a heavy French accent, but uh, really, a really nice fellow, really wonderful guy. So I really like him. But I do think that uh, he could do so much better. He's got a few more good years left him in the sport. Um, he doesn't seem to really have any injuries or anything, so I would like to see him do well. I really would like to see him fix some of those issues. I don't think he needs to have a perfect physique, and if any if history has proven to us anything, you don't need to have a per perfect physique to win shows, uh, but you do have to be able to present it well, and you do have to have, you got to be able to show your strengths, and I think that's kind of part of it as well. So whatever the case, I uh, I definitely think that he's he could he could really, I mean, I, I'm really hoping for the year that you, he, we see him just, explode out there you know what i mean <laughs> yeah yeah um, i mean he, i mean i i love his physique i've always loved his physique so i i hope he uh, i hope he does well he did well last year i mean i thought he did pretty well last year um i think he placed ahead of uh steve kuchlo which if i remember correctly he did and i thought that steve should have placed a little bit ahead of him but again when you see his front versus kuchlo's front and Kuchlo does have a problem with his back as well. You, you know, you have to give it to Lionel on that one. I mean, Lionel wins that, you know, so I could see it. But uh, Steve Steve looked really improved last year. I was surprised um, yes. that he didn't look all that great during uh, the Olympia, but he really did look really good during the Arnold. Yeah, and I've seen some recent stuff as well, and he looks pretty like he's, he's looking more like I would expect him to look that uh, he I think. I don't know if it was his training. I kind of think it was training. I think there's something different going on with his training now um, than he had before. Um, I don't know if it was you that told me this or somebody else told me this. Um, but uh, whatever the case is, he looks like he's really starting starting to look like where, where I thought that he had the potential to. Because um, when he first came out several years ago, you know, he had done well, but I think uh, people, a lot of people uh, was very critical because he was sort of touted as like this next great white hope. And, uh, and yet kind of, and he was sort of achieving it, but yet in the midst of people who, who fans really believed uh, should have probably done better. Um, but now he seems to be coming into his own uh, in, in much stronger ways. So I, I think that it wouldn't surprise me to see Steve in the pot, top three or four. It wouldn't surprise me at all, um, especially with what I saw earlier this week, uh, what he looks like. But I, but that's kind of there's a lot of dependencies, right? Like, because uh, like William Bonnick, if he comes in looking even like like remotely like he usually does, which he's always very consistent. Neil is Neil, his coach is Neil Hill, and he's very consistent with his uh, with his athletes. Probably in my in my opinion, uh, somebody asked me this on like, my Instagram live who I thought some of the best coaches were. Neil's at the top of my list. Um, I believe that he has true level of mastery of, uh, when it comes to coaching for the most part, and. Uh, uh, but I think he'll bring him in very solidly, just like he, we normally see him. Uh, the only thing that will stand his way is that Rolly Winkler's got a lot of momentum, uh, and he's freakishly, monstrously, grotesquely huge. And it's kind of like, you know, so William Bonick, he doesn't have anywhere to go with his physique in terms of size. So only thing he could do is really just keep nailing his condition, refine a little bit here and there, but not a whole. He's he's but he's got a great physique. So I wouldn't surprise me if William came in second. Or third, like it really wouldn't, um, or he could win too because he's won it before. So you never really know. I, I, I really, I, I don't think he's going to win. I don't either. I, I think, it, I, I think it's going to be the Rolly Cur Curry, uh, Curry show. Yeah, and um, I think everything beyond that is a toss up. It would not surprise me. And you know, you were saying how you thought maybe Steve could break in. I think if you're going to go the battle of the tall men. I'm going to have to give Akeem the upper hand on that. That guy is a beast and, like, tall. Yeah. He, I mean, How tall is Akeem? How tall is Akeem? I think he's, like, six feet one, somewhere around oh, there. He's, wow, he's that tall. I did not yeah, realize he was that tall. 
I mean, he might not be that tall. It, it could be the fact that I'm five. <laughs> I mean, you're like a Keebler elf, man. So sorry, like everyone's gonna exactly. see that. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, you know, talking, talking to the Keebler elf here, you know, where uh, you know Jose is Jose Raymond is tall to me. So you know? <laughs> that's okay. It makes you look bigger. <laughs> exactly. So, but I mean, you know, Akeem. I've been really impressed with Akeem. Um, but I, you know, I've always said that if he if he got it, you know, he nailed his conditioning and everything and got his back, the lower back, you know, just freaky, he would be outstanding. And it looks like that's exactly what they've done. And his waist is really tiny for, you know, for him. So I don't know. I, I have to, I, yeah, I have to say I would have a team over Steve. It's been my, uh, so, it's been my interp it's been my experience watching some of these shows, uh, over the years, last um, team many years, thirty years. <laughs> I, I, uh, I definitely know that, or at least I believe that what generally happens is, especially with a guy like like can you get a competitor who we really know should could be and should be placing higher, but it's a, there's a condition issue, there's a development issue, or whatever it is, takes them usually a one to two years to really when they nail it, they they don't usually place exactly. You know, it takes a time to move up. So he may need, right. he, and I could be wrong with this with, with Akeem, but I think that Akeem's probably going to need, this is an important show for him, I think. He needs to show that he's made some improvements. He needs to clean that physique up from, from previous uh, outings so that it looks clean and crisp and it looks like we know that it can look. He needs to do that a couple of times and consistently move up, and then you'll see him break it into where he probably more deserves that shows, which could be, which could be some wins. Um, and I think, he, I think he's got it in him. So that's why I think if I was to put the battle of Steve and, and Akeem together, um, if they're battling it out for, like, say, fourth place, um, I'd probably say Steve has probably got more of a chance of beating Akeem. But, uh, but you know, again, this is all just guess hearsay. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, I, you know, the other thing is I've got Akeem winning on, on, on legs as well. I mean, Akeem's just got better legs than him. Okay. So and what about what about Victor Martinez? Because um, I talked to some people, and he's been kind of – he went out there to Kuwait – uh, and he's, you know, he's, he's putting, he's putting his nose down. I know he knows that his years are coming to a close here. He's not going to have a decade left of competing in him. Um, and he's, and he looks like he's uh, somebody, some, uh, from what I understand, I didn't see pictures before I understand he's looking pretty good, pretty good. So who, he could be uh, in the top seven, six. I, I would like his body at my age as well. <laughs> he's, he's, he's not too far away from my age to begin with. I would take his body. Here's my here's my thought though. One, he is not as imposing as he used to be compared to these guys. These guys have a lot more mass than him, and all these guys have mature mass as well. So that doesn't bode well for him. And the other thing is, I we have not seen his legs. Don't right. know what his legs look like. Only seen his his back shots look great. His front shot looks great as well. But I mean, you know. I saw a picture of him maybe three weeks, you know, yeah, three weeks, yeah, it was three weeks before the, the Arnold, to the Arnold, and I thought he looked great, but if you stack him up with somebody like Roley or somebody in the, you know, top six, even if you stack him up with Luke Sandow, he's going to get lost with Luke Sandow, you know, because Luke has so much, like, so much muscle. The only difference between him and Luke Sandow, uh, Sandow is... is that Luke actually his muscle hasn't matured as much as Victor's muscle has matured, so it's going to look it's going to have a different look. It's going to have a puffier look, or normally he has a really puffy look. Um, what do you think about? I don't think that Victor. I don't really think that Victor has the mass. He's still got that pretty line, but I don't think he has the mass to hang with him in in the top seven. And I don't. And it you know not knowing what his legs look like, I. I I wouldn't put him in the top seven. What about what do you think about Josh? Uh, Josh Lonardowitz. Um, he's done um, so well. Um, Josh is in my top. In my, he's in my top six. I, okay. I think, man, that I like him. Like a freak. I like him. I, I do. It would be. It'd be. I uh, it's. it's I, I with a gut with a show like this. It, my gut tells me that people you need to have some headway coming in. <laughs> you know. Yeah, it, and he took off the whole year, but it, you know, it, it was anticipated, like the anticipation of him coming back since people didn't think he was going to come back is, is, is a really good pull. That's one. Um, and you know, the, the reason why I like Josh is he's like, 
he always comes in very conditioned. He looks like a freak, but he's not the most aesthetically looking guy out there. You know, he's, he's got, got a like, few. Yeah, there's, a, there's a few structural issues. Um, it, exactly, but I, I like that because he's not perfect. You know, um, but his posing could be better. I don't know if you know if they've they've figured that out because his posing could be a lot better. But I'm glad to see him back and everything. Uh, but I, because I, I think he's just a freak. But I, I, I put him in my top six. I don't have him winning. I don't have him in the top four. But I mean, I think it's a great outing for him. And I think he's doing Australia right afterwards. Okay, that's. But I, I think that's much better competition. And I think that competition. I think um, Curry and Roly and Josh are doing Australia. So. Australia should be good too. So. Yeah, yeah, that'll be good. Yeah, that's gonna be yeah. good. Yeah, I knew the curry was. Um, uh, and I actually, I think uh, <clears throat> uh, the guy there's Brazil as well. Right. Uh, and uh, I know right. I know Juan Morel's doing that. I just did his. Uh, 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 I just had him on as a guest in my Handle Your High, and uh, it was a great conversation. But uh, he's uh, looking forward to doing that show and the New York Pro. So that's gonna go. I was, um, but not this show. He's like he's really. I like that he's very. Um, uh, realistic with what he wants. Uh, he wants to. He only wants to go. He feels like he if he that he should go. <laughs> like he won't go to the Olympia. Well, you know, he won't go to the Olympia unless he wins a show, even if he, even well, if he qualifies. I don't know if he wants to do New York. New York, because you know, the the bet is that uh, Rami's going to be doing New York. So well, that, I think that's okay. I think he um, he it's his hometown. You know, like he's a New York guy and and he's got to do it. I think that's just sort of a. I think it's his special. Listen, if it comes between. One, the, the New York crowd yelling for Rami versus Juan. <laughs> I'm sorry, Juan, but Rami's going to get it. I was you there think? Rami like won the New York Pro, and there. I mean, Victor and Juan and John were both in that, and everybody was screaming Rami's name. Everybody. So. Rami got screams, and he was a relative. He, no one even knew him in New York. <laughs> so you, you know that New York, New York is one of those places. They love New Yorkers. They really do. But they're very, you know, they're very real. If you deserve to, like, win, they're all behind you. They love great bodybuilding, and they love freaks, you know. So that's the New York crowd right there. So that's one of the reasons why the New York Pro is one of my favorite, like, shows to go and see. Love that show. Oh yeah, well I like it too. Um, I uh, I guess I uh, haven't I haven't been there for two one or two two years, uh, but I do love that show. Um, I liked it better when they had it at the other location. I don't really like it as much. So did I. I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know. That's just but, but that's. I, I think it's in White White Hall White something. Oh. I, I it's way out there in the it's way out there. It's like a uh, forty five minute drive, uh, where traffic oh um and uh i don't i don't like that location at all i liked it when it was in brooklyn so that's my favorite location when it was in brooklyn yeah me too. but steve <laughs> bring it back to brooklyn please. um <laughs> well, let, so, well, well i mean i i think i think my pick is going to be rolling rolling okay. going to be my pick I, yeah. i'm kind of uh i'm rooting i'm rooting i'm rooting for brandon uh, i'm rooting for brandon curry i want him to win i think he's got it in him but i have a but i think he's suspicion I just think that Rolly's got too much momentum. I think his he's where he needs to be, and I think he's probably going to end up, you know, steamrolling this one a little bit and taking it. That's what I think. Um, uh, the people's champion from the Iron. Well, here, here's my prediction. So Rolly will take. Uh, I, I think he'll take Columbus. I don't think Rolly, after taking Columbus, will actually do uh, the Australian tour. Really. So then I think Curry will win Australia. Okay. And then I think that Bonnick will win, um, what is it, uh, South Africa? Uh, I believe it's South Africa. Yeah, right yeah, yeah, there, yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. So, I, and I think, I think that's what happens. And then the New York Pro will go to Rami. Rami, okay. That's my prediction. Yeah, so it, it, that's if Rami does it. Because Rami could conceivably, conceivably do Tampa Pro for all, that, all we know. Oh, so, so I mean, it's just a rumor that he's going to do New York. So we'll it's, see. It's not a done deal. Well, we'll see what happens. I guess. Um, so, well, well, let's we'll switch gears just a little bit and we'll go to the classic physique guys. I got my list in front of me. Um, 
So it looks like there's a, there's a, a nice uh, number here. We got, and I, I, I hope I don't murder some of these names. Uh, we got Khalid uh, Chikaoa, Chikoi. I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, yeah, Char- yeah, forget it. <laughs> Char- <laughs> Charles, <laughs> Charles Curtis, uh, Ali, uh, Emery, I see, D- Dion Harris, uh, Lejean Jones, Steve Lorius, uh, Fabio Lopez, Elijah Loreno. See, I'm no, I don't know half these guys. Uh, Jason Lowe, <laughs> uh, see, David Martinez Campos, uh, Romudi, Ricky Moten, uh, Courage Opera, o- Opera. I love that man. These names, courage, man. Like I'm, I think I'm gonna name my son Bravery. Um, Keone, Keone, uh, Keone Pearson, George Patterson. Uh, um, I guess it's Pencia Pierre, Penex Pen- Pen- Pierre, and Wesley v- Vissers. So, I well, what you, you give me your take here on this? This is because I don't know some of these guys. Uh, um, I don't know some of these guys. I, George Brown isn't doing it. I thought he was. No, do- George, George Brown is not doing it. And and uh, I just ran into George Brown in in Ohio in Columbus, but he's okay. not doing it. So oh, that's uh, a shame. <laughs> um, so so Steve Loris is a young guy who uh, basically won Pitts, the Pittsburgh Pro. Okay. And then he was the one that went to the New York Pro as a two twelve competitor and got almost dead last (laughs) so um you know he has been you know he went and he started working um i don't know if he's still with neil neil hill but i I think he is because he was in tampa working with neil hill and prepping uh some sometimes with uh flex lewis okay um so i am curious to see what he looks like he has a body that is kind of like i would say it's kind of like um, the black Arnold Schwarzenegger in a way. It's got that sort of look to it, except um, when he won Pittsburgh, it, it, it's an argument that he did not really deserve that win. He was not, he was not in shape. Oh. Um, so I, I thought that they gave it to him because his back is fantastic and some of his shots are just very picturesque and he, he does have a flowing, you know, he, he's got a pretty body. So who's you know? your who's your standouts here? Like I guess George um, George Peterson. George Peterson is number one. Yeah, yeah that's, that's who, who I would pick. Going to blow blow this field away. It's over. I just don't see anybody here, and I hate to say that because I don't see anybody here that's mature enough in this in it yet to be able to beat him. The the only person that I give an outside to is uh, Pearson, because Pearson has been working yeah. with uh, Flex um, Flex okay. Wheeler, and he looks really really good. Flex is. Um, Flex is doing stuff that you, you know, you say, you know, people should do, which is high rep. So he's been doing a lot of high rep training with medium weight. And so he's been looking really good. I saw some pictures of Charles Curtis. Charles Curtis does look very good as well. Okay. Um, so um, I wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me if Charles didn't crack into the, the top three. And uh, Courage Ampera was the surprise last year. Uh, I believe he was third last year. Um, he wasn't in the crispest shape, but he was he was the best one. You know, he was really good for, you know, the rest of the field. He could have been in better shape, but he look, he looks really good. So it'll be interesting to see what he looks like. And I do like uh, this guy, Khalid. I've seen a, a couple of pictures of him and everything, and he looks interesting. I don't know how well he's going to do, but he'll be something, somebody that people should like look out for. I think Wesley Visser, I, you know, he won a show last year and I thought he was incredibly off. Um, and then when he, and then he went to the Olympia and he got dead last at the Olympia. So, um, I did see some pictures of him, uh, four weeks into it. I think it was on Giles's, uh, yeah, it was on Giles, uh, muscle, Muscle Development Weekly, those pictures, even Giles said, he looked like he was at least four weeks out. And There was a and, few guys, you know, I think I remember correctly, there was a couple guys like that but uh, at, the, at the Olympia. But, um, but yeah. it's hard. This, this division's still very, very new. We're kind of still getting to see what physiques are, are really resonating with the judges and which ones are... And it really, you know, you got to judge what's in front of you. So, like, you know, when I'm... 
and I'm looking at these guys uh, judging. I have to I have to judge what's in front of me, and I can tell some of them really, really they're trying to find their own. Um, and, and, and most of them are so young. Many of them are young. Many of them are young. So to get the nail, to be a pro at that level uh, in bodybuilding, uh, you, to, whether you're 212 or open, you really have been seasoned. You know? Right. And so you have, at least to a certain degree, you have your conditioning. You know? but, uh, so I'm, I'm surprised that uh, Brian Ansley is not going to compete because I'd like, I, if it was me, I'd, I'd, I'd go and I'd compete at the show. But I guess because um, he yeah. doesn't. You know, he's got a lot of business commitments and stuff like that. And, uh, well, you know, this is part you know, of it. Cause, hey, listen, <laughs> listen, the black swan is, is busy, man. I, I mean, totally can. I, I to- <laughs> <laughs> he's too busy for this. He won last year. He's too busy. Hey, well, I was, I was surprised that Arash didn't do it. I really did. I, I thought he, Arash would have done it, but if he did, he, I, he would stand a good chance of winning. I think I, I complete. I, you know what? I wonder whether or not he made, you know, he he made the commitment not to do it before he actually saw the lineup. Yeah. Well, or you know, but you you and I talked to him like after the Olympia, and um, you know, he's a very cerebral guy, so he you know he probably, you know, he probably just wanted to take. I mean, he's. Well, he, I think he's 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 like a lot of guys. I think, and this I'm not. I don't want to speak for him, but my guess is that he's going to focus all of his his attention on the Olympia. Maybe do something beforehand, but focus most of his attention on really doing doing that, making some small improvements um, on his physique. I think that's my guess. Um, I could be wrong, but that's my guess. A lot of guys do that, um, and it and it really, you know, to me, uh, in this division, because the weight, because the guys at the top, they're not going anywhere in weight. You know right. I mean, so there's it, it. It actually behooves you to uh, to be able to compete again. You, it, it's very realistic to be able to compete twice at like this to do the Arnold in Olympia, and I would do it. I personally would do it um, because, especially for somebody like Arash and for somebody like Brian Ansley, both these guys who are always in the top, a couple of spots. Well, Brian's always winning, uh, but he should be able to win. Uh, and he, and I would, especially if you like. Well, my logic would be for for uh, Arash. Would be if you can't win the Olympia the last couple of times and you're working your way up to win it, then this yep. is the show to win. This is the exactly. show to get through momentum, and you can't, you don't have a lot of places to go with weight, so it's not like you need a huge off season to to build, build, build. And for and for Breon, I would say, I get it you're, that you're busy, but uh, you you extend your career by being successful in competition. It doesn't make you money necessarily more than your business opportunities could, but in the long run. You you uh, you increase your brand. It's about developing a brand when you can, because someday you won't be able to do it on stage. You know what I mean? Like some of the guys, like uh, and I'm not trying to harp on it, but like Dexter stuff got started late building their brand. Um, in right. My, in my opinion, um, and uh, right. but the guys who started early, wow, they don't need to win. Look at uh, Kai Green, who doesn't need to win a single. He doesn't need to compete, and he's right. <laughs> he, and so same thing with um, with Jay Cutler. Uh, and, and even Ronnie Coleman, who's who has, still has a very uh, not strong brand in the industry, uh, and that's and the, but he's a different case because he won the Olympia so many times. And right. Was, so that's a difference. But these other guys aren't going to probably do that. You know, what I mean, they're you know even somebody like Brian, who's probably not going to win the Olympia time and time and time and time again. There's going to be all kinds because this is like I said, it's evolving. So I would be thinking strategically. Um, I get it. You want to win the big show, um, but it's I would rather win. A slightly smaller show, many times. <laughs> if, well, yeah, you know. I mean, but the other thing is, doesn't a rush still have to? Doesn't he have to qualify? Yes. Yeah, he would have to qualify. Okay, so, so I, I guess maybe he's waiting for the New York Pro. Probably. My, my my guess is he's probably my guess is he's probably waiting to be able to qualify and then go right into the Olympia. You know what okay, I mean? Okay, so so he's either going to do Canada or. I, you know, he may have told me this, and I'll bet you he probably is. One of those shows, probably like... Okay, so, you know, because, I mean... I should have paid attention. You know, it wouldn't surprise me if he did the New York Pro, because, I mean, that's in his yeah, backyard. Yeah, exactly. He wouldn't have to go anywhere in order to do the New York Pro. He would just have, to start, already, dieting. He would just have to start dieting now. <laughs> well, true. I mean, I, I still think he should have done... You know, I, I know that he said that there were a lot of improvements that he wanted to make, especially on his back and everything yeah. else. So, I mean, maybe that's, you know, that maybe the deal is, you know, so, well, um, but I, I wish, I wish he had, because technically of all of the classic physiques, um, 
he is he's actually my favorite. Okay, so, good. Good. Yeah, he, he is my favorite. Well, moving on, uh, men's physique, uh, which is kind of a fun one uh, because. Uh, it's got because so many, there's so many people. There's so many people, <laughs> and, and there's so many interesting character characters. I'm writing this down for my notes so I can post it, but so don't, um, that's why I'm typing away. But um, looks like we have uh, more competitors. This one, obviously, uh, they they extend this class out a little bit. But uh, well, last year's Andre Ferguson was last year's champion. A very kind of outspoken kind of guy, nice fella, um, but wonderful physique. Um, I, I, is he doing it? Let's see. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, Andre Ferguson is doing it, and George Brown. We made a mistake. George Brown is in physique, so he is doing it. Okay. So, oh, I'm sorry, George Brown. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was looking at physique. Yeah, dear. Um, let's see. Yep, <laughs> we got. So I'm just gonna go. There's several people, here, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit some of the people that I, that I think are important to watch for. Um, Raymond Edmonds. Uh, I think he's important yep. to watch for. George Brown. Yep. Um, of course, um, let's see Andre Ferguson, uh, Sadiq. Uh, of course, Sadiq has a big. He's you know one of the first winner of this show in 2015, um, which is so he's going to be doing. It. And I and I heard Sadiq. Uh, he'll probably be the most interesting one to watch for this one because he's taken some time off. He's re really sort of capitulated, and it looks like he's made some good improvements. So. Yep. Um, uh, do, 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 let's see. I don't know who else you got here. Because there's a lot of guys. So um, there's so I, I've got a. Uh... Logan, I think uh, Logan Franklin. Yes, Logan Franklin, of course. And um, I think that uh, uh, so Chaz maybe Chase uh, maybe um, maybe Chase. Oh, Chase the boy. Oh yes, yes, yeah. Chase the boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a. I didn't see him. Yeah, yeah. I think that. that and those are probably some of the top guys. There's probably I mean, one or two guys may sneak into that top five, top six, um, uh, pretty easily because I don't know some of the have these guys. Next time we do a roundup. For the for the Arnold and for the Olympia when we do the Olympia, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little more research. So I apologize for not doing my research. I'm just been so swamped with all this other stuff in the podcast. <laughs> um, well, and, and, and plus you are not uh, you're not doing cardio every day, so you're you're not you know able no. to see all of these like uh, all of all of these YouTube things that I have to see because I'm doing cardio. All <laughs> uh, well, I, I really hope uh, in, in this lineup. I really hope that I kind of feel that. That uh, well, um, Andre Ferguson's probably going to win again, um, but but you never know because I really hope that uh, uh, what well, I hope that Chase Savoy does well. I really like his physique. I really think he's got a winner of physique, um, but you never know what what how they people look next to each other. But Sadiq, I hope he does well. I really do. I really want him to do well. I think he's a crowd favorite. Um, but it's probably going to be Andre Ferguson, and I bel- and I would probably say it now, top three. I mean, if George Brown doesn't hit the top three, it would surprise me because he's got such a strong physique yep. for men's physique. He's got a he has got a midsection that I just don't see anybody beating. But yep. any, really, really a wonderful and and probably the best skin tone out there, man. Nice dark complexion. It looks great on yep. stage, and he I poses wish I had well. Skin tone. Yeah. <laughs> so, so those are my picks. I, it's a great class. Um, but it'll be it'll be interesting. It'll be good. I, I, like I said, so I think probably Raymond Edmonds stands to be the favorite. But I'm rooting for George to do well and for S- Sadiq to do well. Oh, so and I Chase. Think it's going to be uh, so. I think it's going to be Andre. Andre Ferguson's going to win. I'm pretty sure about that. Uh, I I love Ray, Raymond's uh, physique. I think it's a great physique. Um, and then of course I've got George Brown after that. Um, I'm not sure where Sadiq is going to land and everything. I'm not really sure about him, but I do like Chase a lot. So, I do too. I really do. Yeah. And he's, so, and man, that dude's getting in shape. I saw some pictures. He looks like he's just, he's coming in smaller. He's dialed in. He's taking the advice. I mean, like, they don't, you know, like he's really, I think he's got a stance of really great chase. Maybe I'll have him on my podcast. Somebody. <laughs> yeah. And I, I forgot Logan Franklin. I, I really did. I, I, I was impressed with the way that he looked at the, uh, at the Olympia. So. Okay. All right, well, cool. yeah. well, we'll do one more. Is, is it Logan? Is Logan the one that is um, being coached by Neil, Neil Hill or no? It's possible. I don't. I don't know for sure. I don't know. Yeah. Um, it's possible. People switch coaches so much, you know, in this industry. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It, it could. It could be Ryan Terry that he's. I think it's Ryan Terry. Okay. But. Well, uh, now we'll switch gears a little bit to the women, and we'll go to some figure. Um, because it's one of my, it's one of the ones that I really like. I like the figure class. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah, I, I, I know you like the figure class. <laughs> well, the, of course, last year's, uh, winner, last two years, she won Candace Lewis Carter. 
I uh, almost got a chance to coach her uh, several years ago before, and I just knew when I saw her way back when, like several years ago, that she was going to be an Olympian, uh, and she was going to have a, uh, one of the best. But she, at the time, her, her quads were so uh, dominant. Huge. Uh, yeah. They were just dominant yeah, on her physique. They needed to tone them down. Um, doesn't, let's see, is she... Uh, no, See, she's not in, she's not in it. She's probably just focusing on the Olympia. That's my guess. But Sydney is my my girl. Sydney uh, is 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 in it. So she's my favorite. And of course, if she doesn't win, it would like I think I would probably just have a heart attack because I just don't think that uh, anybody in this lineup. So we got um, some so a couple of unknowns of sorts, but uh, some good a lot of good competitors. We got Maria Diaz, Melissa Bumstead. Yeah. Uh, Brittany Campbell, uh, Zulma Duran, Wendy Fortino. Go, Wendy. I love you, girl. Uh, let's see. Sydney Gillian. Of course, my girlfriend, Sydney Gillian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, girlfriend. yeah girlfriend. <laughs> Sandra, Sandra uh, Gialis. I think it's a, she's a Hispanic. I, I'm fucking that name up. I'm sorry. Uh, Michelle Lindsay, Lola Montez, Jessica Reyes Padilla. She's a great physique, and actually, uh, Arash coaches her. Uh, he's done. Oh, great, really? Yeah, he's done okay. a great job with her. Um, Noeli, Noelia Segura, uh, Natalia uh, Soltero, Carly Harrell. Uh, let's see, bon, uh, Bonya. Uh, v- v- I'm going to mess this. It's, it's Baltic. Uh, Vasilik, Vasilik, and Nadia White. Now, a couple of people that I think that really stand out for me. Wendy should do well. She yeah. always does well. So she should do. She should easily place in the top of five. And she's looking really stellar right now. Sydney, of course, I believe will win. I just don't think that she's going to lose in this, in this lineup. Um, and, the, and here's the dark horse, so to speak, that's going to come out. Nadia Wyatt. She's a little tiny thing. And yeah. she has the perfect, if there's a perfect physique out there, it's, she's got it. Like tiny waist, well-developed muscles. The problem that she has is she poses too quickly. Yeah. And she doesn't really... Um, show this really nice uh, she needs to work on her presentation so that she can display this really wonderful physique Uh, but I do like Jessica Padilla but she may or may not she did okay at the Olympia but um, uh, and she did okay at other shows Uh, she won some uh, show last year I think a second uh, second or third another show I believe or something like that and uh, she's done well but uh, she's I think she looks a bit muscular uh, for the yeah. class, and so that's she may, you know, it may hold her back. Um, she looks like a physique competitor to me. She does. She does. She looks. She yeah. looks like a physique competitor. Yeah. And we were. I think she was at the Olympia, and we were yep. making the comment there. Uh, but great physique, and you never know what's going to happen. It's easy to, to come down like that. It's easy to take a physique and really whittle it down. So there's some. Uh, there's some. There's some hope. Uh, Melissa Bumstead. Now, uh, interesting. Um, I don't know. I haven't seen her directly in, uh, compete, but that's uh, Chris's a- actually, wife, right? Actually, you did. You, you see saw that's... her at the Olympia. Okay. She was one of the sixteen. I think there were sixteen Canadians. Oh, right. That's right. Canada. Yeah, yeah. You made a point. That's right. And exactly. and, the, and, and, and I hate to say this because I like Chris's physique, and I it's okay. Like he still needs some. He still needs to to continue to to um, mature, and he'll do great. Um, right. That's his wife, right? No, no, no. Sister, They're siblings. Sister, sister, sister. Yeah. So, so he, she is actually married to Ian. Oh. Ian Valen. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's that's uh, they got married last year, actually. So she's newly she's a newlywed. Okay. So she, I kind of felt like not, and I'm not trying to like bum rush her or anything, but. I kind of feel like she gained. She's gotten. She's been able to capitalize a little bit of momentum from her brother. Actually, I I, I would disagree. I think, and it's not because I'm a Canadian homer, which I am. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but um, I think actually her physique is really good. I, I think that she's very young. Um, but out of this lineup and everything, I could see her in the top five. Okay. Um, I think that some sometimes her physique is a little bit overpowering. And you kind of look at it and go, you could probably, you know, gain a little bit and go into physique. Um, so Excuse it depends. Me. She's got a power to me. She's got a powerful like look, um, but it, it's very, it's very, um, you know, she's got a, a very nice figure. She's got very nice muscularity. It's very feminine. Um, I, I, I liked her look at the Olympia. Um, I think one of the reasons why she didn't play so well at Olympia is because she's brand new. You yeah, know, yeah. So. Um, At least she was there, which means she's done well. Exactly. She, so I don't think she's going to be so lost in, in this competition. I think it's a great competition for her to do. 
Um, I'd like to see her do a couple of more, a couple more before going to the Olympia though. Yeah. Um, because I think that she needs to, to be seen a lot more and people need to see her as Melissa Bumstead instead of I'm Chris Bumstead, uh, <laughs> you know, you know, sister. And I think a lot of people do that though. I mean, come on, everybody's human. They, you know, they think, Oh, well, he, okay. Well, he's done you so know. well and he's, Came out, come out uh, and with like on fire the last couple of years, last two years or so, and um, so. But it's natural, right? Like it's natural. But right. um, but yeah. So hey, I'm I'm actually you know I'm um, I'm actually really impressed, uh, and Nigel, you've uh, educated yourself a little bit on the women's side. When we, 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 we yeah. went to the Olympia, you were, you you were like I'm I'm not I'm going to be honest, Tad. I'm not going to know much about the ladies' side. I'm like okay, and then but you've done up your game, bro. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, you made me like look at two hours. I made women. you, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, yeah. I, 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 as I said, you know, most gay men do not look <laughs> at women for two but hours. But you can appreciate a great physique. You can I mean, you know, but I mean, but I, I think you know, I think this this is going to be a great Arnold. I'm I'm super excited. Um, I my only drawback to this Arnold is the lack of 212. I hate that. They need to bring back the 212. Um, I think that there are other things that they can do. I don't know. Get rid of ballroom dancing. I have no problem. <laughs> <laughs> just, I mean, just bring back the 212. And I think that this is one of the, the few things that I would like argue with the committee. They said that there wasn't enough participation in the top, in the, you know, from the top bodybuilders from 212. That's the logic that they're giving people. But if you look at it, the only people in the top 10 two, and 212s that did not compete last year at the Arnold was Flex Lewis and um, uh, uh, Mr. USA, uh, Lunsford. Oh, Derek Lunsford, yeah. Yeah, so those two were the only ones that did not compete, you know, that were in the top 10. Now think about that. I'm sorry, Ashkenazi. Okay. So those were three guys. So think about that. And they, and because Camille got to, like, you know, be seen and everything, he got a lot of buzz going into that show and actually almost took, you know, took second place. And I, I would say that he should have gotten second place at the Olympia. So, I, you know, I thought it was an exciting show last year. The 212 show was one of the, one of the best shows, you know, of the whole event. Yeah, I don't know. So, it's kind of a shame, though. I, I agree with you. It's a shame that they're that they dropped the two twelve out. I'm not even sure why. Um, if it's for timing reasons or what, I don't know. Um, but whatever the case is, it's too bad because I really liked it. It was I, I was one of my, one of the divisions I looked forward to the most. Um, but nonetheless, it is what it is. Um, I'm going to switch gears one more time. We're going to cover this next division really quick, and I don't expect you to know a lot. It's the bikini division. And, uh, <laughs> and it's because there, there's some good competitors, um, but there's just a couple that I want to highlight, um, and, and I'll make my prediction. So um, last year, the last two years, Angelica Texera won, of course, yep. and uh, she was actually an Olympia winner as well. Um, but uh, do we, the standouts here this year looks like to me, looks like, if I look at the list right, um, is Janet Leog, um, Ashley Kisswalter, um, and let's see, there's probably one or two others in there too. But those, to my, in my book, those are two, my two favorites. Um, I probably think that uh, Ashley's going to come come in and win this yeah. Uh, yeah. pretty easily, uh, but I could be wrong. There could be somebody else in here that I'm missing. If I don't see, I'm sorry, ladies. Um, <laughs> there's, but there are some really because you know sometimes new people come up uh, uh, out of nowhere and you never know. And this would be the show to do it at, you know. So, but it's you know when it comes to bikini, it's really so much of it is really about shape and structure and uh, I mean they all are going to be in shape they're going to look good but so much of it is shape and structure and so when you have somebody it's so easy for them to come up right away without really having to develop I hate to say it like this but we really haven't taken so many years to develop a physique uh, which is why many of them are so young because it doesn't take years and years and years um, so so why is it there a complaint that the, you know that the bikini girls the top 10 of the bikini girls don't you know, don't come to the show. Uh, what do you mean? What do you mean? Talk. I mean, you know, it, there was, you know, 212, you know, the theory is that the top stars don't go, you know, go to the 212 Arnold. They don't compete. But I mean, this bikini lineup, like you said, you know, you only really know two of these, uh, of these women that are in, in the bikini lineup, you know, 
So I, I guess I'm missing the question. I'm sorry. Maybe I'm so, just. Err. So it, it just seems like, you know, this is not the top ten. This is not the top ten or the top five that were at the Olympia. Correct. Correct. Yeah. 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 Why okay. aren't? So why aren't they so, here? <laughs> Exactly. Why are they, I mean, you know, the, the criticism behind 212 or taking out the 212, one of the criticisms was that they couldn't get the top five to to actually, oh, you know, right. you know, to come. But it's not the same. The same is not said for bikini, because none of these girls other than Ashley and Janet are actually in the top 10. Well, good question. I think it's because there's, a, there's a, such a high volume of them. There's one that's one factor. Um, and and another factor is that the payout for this the first place is only seven thousand dollars so you're you're not going to get the same volume of competitors who are at the top, hot top level you're going to get others so the ones who believe they can win the top ones they're probably going to be more likely to show up um, right because they want that seven grand um so uh, and they want the title uh but the other ones the the say five place five through ten Probably won't do this show, or or even beyond that. Probably won't do this show because they probably figure that the top girls are going to be the, they're not going to win that show either. So it's going to be another almost run, and you can and you and you place out of the money after sixth place. So if right. you feel like you could be in the top six, go for it. If you feel like right. you can't, you know, bide your time and do a show, spend your money, do a show that you know that you can, that you can probably that you might have a better chance of placing. That's a that's probably that's probably the reason why. Yeah, because I mean, you know, no. No offense to the bikini girls, but uh, you know th this division doesn't make me you know as it doesn't intrigue me as much as the physique division and the figure division because you know there's a lot more competition in the physique. So we think, then, like you said, some of these bikini girls, we've, we women, we haven't seen and everything, and they could be awesome. We just right. haven't seen them, <laughs> you know. But just based on you know, name value and everything else, there's not that many big names. There's two big names in that whole life, you know. Yeah, well, and it's, and it's sometimes it's hit and miss too. So some years uh, you get a du you get almost, a, you get a close duplication of, of the uh, Olympia. But sometimes, you know, so, but I think a lot of it has to do with the, the payout. Um, it gets really sparse. So like when you look at, say, the women's physique division, uh, almost no, there's a couple of people that may have been in Olympia, but really there's not a whole lot of people that stand out to when I look at the names. I'll tell you right. who's going to walk away from it, walk away with it, easy, hands down, um, Natalia Colio. She's just, she's the only, oh, yeah. she's yeah. the only big name on this list that I see in the competitors. And the problem with this is that, um, you know, at first place pays out five grand. So now you get, now the money goes down more and it pays to sixth place, 500 bucks. It's okay. You're getting money. But the problem is that like, you know, again, there's fewer like you, when you have there's a, there's a lot of physique competitors, and so you you get you get the same kind of strategy. If they don't feel like they can win. It's really not worth it because unless you just need the points to get to the Olympia um, or something of that nature. But just but to get the points, you got to place in the top spots. So well, the, yeah, it may be the reason why I'm more interested in. You're right because women's physique doesn't really have that many big names and everything. But maybe the reason why it would have interest to me is because. There's a lot of muscle up on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you one division I'm kind of excited for this year, um, and it's something that you and I don't really have to report on for the NBC News, but it's the uh, pro wheelchair division. They're going to have it at the Arnold, yeah, yeah. and they're going to have it at the Olympia. I was, was going to say something about that. Actually. Yeah, so, and, and I, I, I'm saying this because one of my good friends, who's also a who, pro, Kim, Chris Dim, who I had on my show, but I've known him for, gosh, 20 years, or since the 90s, late 90s, when I, when he, uh, when I first met him. Uh, in the early 2000s when he turned pro and I, uh, and, and I started to see him at shows. Um, great guy. I love him to death. And he was a truly, truly, he was an awesome bodybuilder when he was, before he had his, uh, the issues with his nerves and his spine and stuff. And he gets paralyzed. Not, he's not completely paralyzed in the waist down, no. but, but he's had some issues uh, and aortic, uh, it's frayed. Um, and it is, so it's got like, it's, so he's, he, he's, he believes that he's going to come out. So I, if you want to, his whole story on that, People could listen to my uh, my interview that I did with him on my podcast, Handle Your High. It was he did a great job explaining it. Um, he's doing like stem cell therapy, and it's, he's getting some stuff back. But he's still in a wheelchair, and he has to work out in one. And but he's better off than some of the guys, you know. Um, but it's interesting. So like you know Harold uh, Kelly, who's compete, who's probably the favorite because he's all, he's won it three times. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah exactly. Yep. Um, but Chris is going to be bigger than everybody else. I can tell you that for sure because yeah. he's a big kid. And I remember he's like 
just he and I are about the same height. And I remember going backstage and he was guest posing and it's like, and he was so big looking and he was only 208 pounds. And I'm like, damn, how come I don't look like that at 208 pounds? I'm like, this big, he's got 22 and three inch arms, you know, like I think it was like 22 inch arms at the time. And he's a little, he's a, you know, an Asian guy like, like me, but, um, but he, uh, but he seemed to look so much bigger. I always thought, but so I'm hoping, but he, he told me that this show, he's not going to be look his best. He will be at the Olympia. They gave him, a, right. they, they want to bring him there. So he's not going to look his best because he really decided to do, to really locked it in. I think maybe seven weeks ago, eight weeks ago. So he had started he, he, because it was just sort of Harold called him and said, Hey man, or I think it was Harold called him and said, you know, come on, we want you to do this show. You do the Olympia. And he's like, nah. He said, well, do the Arnold. They got him to do the Arnold and then to a warm up for, and he's going to keep dieting. He's going to come in shape for the Olympia this year. So that's going to be cool. And I, and Chris is such a good guy. I want to see him do well. I, and I want to see him, uh, I want to see more success for him. He's, he's a good positive role model for the sport. None of these other guys, uh, aside from Harold, perhaps they they don't, not, not, I'm not saying they don't, but they don't, they don't have the same uh, personality like like right. Chris is actually he's known and he's he's trying to do something positive for people who are have these disabilities and and showing people that you can you don't have to take you don't have to take this on your back you can still get up and, and live your life and accomplish accomplish the things you want so the sad thing is the payout for the first place is only three thousand dollars <laughs> well, yeah but I, I don't think he's really no no it's not about the money, money. it's not and, about the and money and from what I've understood he's going to actually do most of the wheelchair uh, events that they're going to have this year. You know, so uh, apparently, yeah, I, I heard it on a different interview okay. that, um, that he, he is going to do that. I also heard that, um, you know, he's working with Milos. Yeah. So yeah, you yeah automatically yeah. think insulin, right? Uh, apparently he's not doing insulin. That's no. not going to be in his protocol at all. Apparently they, they, they tried it out and it's inter- He said it was interesting when you are, um, when your, your body, you know, is different when you cannot use your legs. So the way that you you carry weight or gain weight and everything is completely different because half of your body is not functioning. Oh. You know, and I never really thought about that. So apparently, like, you know, insulin blew him up too much. Oh. That, you know, they, he said, you know, he told Milos, I, I can't do that. So, you know, even his, his drug protocol he was saying is completely different than when, you know, he was, you know, he was competing. He almost made it sound like he was almost borderline natural in a way, you know, comparatively speaking, I'm sure that after this, you know, I'm sure he, you know, when you, when you almost die, um, you, you, you take different priorities. (laughs) Exactly. I mean, that's what he was saying is that, you know, he's more in tune with his health, but you know, you have to, you have to think about it only half of his body functions. So some of like some of the food that he eats, yeah. like, he has to be completely, he, his diet has to be completely different than when he was, um, you know, a, a, a full bodied athlete. So, but it was a really good interview. I haven't heard yours yet. I, I will. Oh my gosh. And you're like a, and you're like a reoccurring guest. <laughs> well, I, I, listen, I, I listened to all of the, I, I even listened to the Dorian Yates one. Oh, good. Okay. Well, so, I know how you feel about Dorian. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So, so, I mean, I, 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 see, I've heard everyone except for Chris and Wands because okay. Wands just got just came out today. Just came out today. But well, I, I have to admit, my favorite one so far is uh, my favorite one was Sean Ray. Oh, okay. Yeah. You. Pre- okay. That's good. He was good. He was I'm good. But I love Sean. He's. We. I've known him for years, and and uh, he's. A good caliber guy, he really is. He gets a bad rap sometimes, but he only gets a bad rap because he likes to speak the truth as he sees it. So, um, plus, plus he 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 has a sense of humor. He's hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think he's funny. I mean, I I thought maybe he had me cracking up during the Olympia, you know, buffet. Oh, <laughs> yeah, the <that would> be... <laughs> him and uh and uh Mike uh, uh... Samir Banu. No, 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 no. Um. Oh gosh, no! Or is his name Richard? The one with uh, he—he's uh, an IFBB pro, and he was wearing the loud like he always wears. Oh, uh, Chris Dickerson! Uh, no, Chris, um, no, no, uh, not Chris Dickerson. No, no, uh, 
Uh, I know you're talking about tall guy. Um, he was a he was real big in the '90s or in the '80s. At, at is the it Mike Christensen? Mike Christian. Great, uh, yeah. Chris, so, Mike Christian, yeah. Yeah. So nice guy. Mike. That dude. He's still got he's still got some pizzazz in him, man. Oh, oh yeah. He he, he those two together. But he it looked like he was going to a club, man. He was in his oh, little yeah. shirt, man. Yeah, and he got the like, shoes and the like. I was. I, like, technically, I thought maybe Melly Mel. Uh, <laughs> like, uh, dressed him up. I was looking for Melly Mel. Melly Mel wasn't even at the uh, at the no. reception, which no. kind of surprised me because normally Melly Mel is all over the place. <laughs> I, I think we should grab him during the Arnold because he's going to be there. Oh yeah. The we should grab him during the Arnold and do an interview. The guy is hilarious. I met him um, during the finals three years ago. Great guy. You know, he well, wouldn't rap for me at that point in time. Uh, we should, but maybe we'll do that. I'll bring some stuff. Um, check those guys. So I want to make one mention though uh, before we end this one, the prize money. So like I didn't mention, I've been mentioning a little bit of prize money. So the prize money for the payout for the uh, for the for the uh, open first place is 100, 130,000, second place is seventy five, third place is fifty thousand, fourth is thirty, and fifth is fifteen. Now there's also what is it? Um, I'm a cruising here. The classic physique guys on the payouts is five thousand, two thousand, fifteen hundred for first, second, third. It goes down to sixth. Um, and then, of course, the physique, uh, 5,000, 2,000, 1,500, down to third, and so forth. So the big money is in the open class. Now, the reason why I want to, reason why I'm mentioning that is because if it were me, oh, oh, and by the way, there's also, um, when you look at the, the payout for the open division as well, um, the payout's a lot bigger, of course. Um, the one, it's, like I said, 130, 130,000 for first place, 75,000 for second, 50,000 for third. Um, and then thirty thousand for fourth, and fifteen for fifth, and then ten thousand dollars for a mu- most muscular award. As Gary say, there's most muscular award. And then they got an Ed Corny Best Pose Award for ten thousand. Now that's a pretty significant way. for just being the best poser in the open class or the most muscular award. You will get more than most of the other divisions get uh, for first place. And it's interesting. So, and they give such little money to the ladies, such little money. So here's what my record. If it was me, um, and I were the winner. Of, uh, now this is me, but I am not saying anybody else should do this. If I won the first place, I would take, I would probably take thirty grand, and I would probably either give it to some, get, like for instance, the wheelchair. I guess I would probably uh, give it to a charity or something. Um, I think, or or um, give it to like maybe uh, donate it back. It's going to sound weird, but I, I just would want to encourage some of these other divisions to come. Because and 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 reward them like it's just fucking money. He was like, <laughs> but I get it. They work hard for it. But I get no, it. No, no, no. Here, here's the thing. I, as a, you know, as a part, you know, as a as a fan and everything, I would be willing to pay ten more dollars. Yes. In order to go to the, um, you know, go to the expo, and you know, maybe five more dollars in order to go to the finals, and everything. If they were going to give all of that money to the prize money, you know, to not to the open because the open already makes enough money to me. But if they were going to give the excess money, all all the extra money that I'm paying, that all of us are paying and split. That, that's a great idea. That's a great and, idea. And, and then no one has to lose their money because the thing about it is I don't want the open men to lose their money. They, you know. They rightfully deserve the money. That is their yes, prize. Yes, I, I agree. I agree. Home. I'm just saying that this is me personally. Everybody should come up. Yeah, I agree. Right. I agree. I, I think that, I think that basically, as fans and everything, if we, you know, if we call ourselves fans of the sport, I mean, let, let's put it this way: the expo is not that expensive. I mean, compared to the Olympia, those tickets are not expensive. You oh. know, um, and if you buy them early. The expo is is really economical. Yeah, this it's is, is a, for what you get. Well, yeah, and the, and the Arnold Expo is really technically typically bigger than the Olympia Expo. Exactly. And, and there's more stuff going on there. They have like a hundred and something events uh, throughout the course of the weekend, and it's pretty massive. Although I will admit, as I look down the events, um, like for instance, they like dance. They have everything from like dance yep. uh, and to fitness, dance, fitness, cheerleading, CrossFit. There's pickleball, pole yep. fitness. So for me, man, like, okay, when they say, oh, we got 150 events, okay, I'm sorry, uh, but some of that shit don't count for events for me. It doesn't count for sports. It is. I'm not going to bash them. But right. but as a bodybuilder, I don't care about youth dance sport. I don't care about 
There's actually Viking Dash Trail Run. I mean, okay, it's a trail run. <laughs> I don't even know what fucking pickleball is. Okay, I'm, and it's not to say that pickleball is not because I didn't know what fucking handball was before one before Juan told me that he was a really great handball player. Oh yeah, that's and, big there. Yeah. Oh, it's big in New York. Yeah, it's huge. Like yeah, right. It's big in New York. Yeah. Um, so, but I knew they had like fencing and gymnastics and hand. They have handball. Fuck, hey yeah, Juan, yeah, you handball. should do handball, bro. Uh, well, I mean, come on, handball. I mean, all you need is a wall and a <laughs> and ball a and a hand. <laughs> I mean, it's not really that. That hard. I mean, I mean, it's hard, but it's not that hard to like outfit. I'm know? curious. They have. I'm looking. I'm just happen to be looking at the list. They have um, bo- amateur boxing, pro boxing, uh, and they have pro and amateur MMA. And then, so I'm one. Uh, I'm wondering how. Like, is it tied to any of the big organizations? Uh, yeah, actually, it is. And and if you remember, I don't know if you remember this, but um, you know, they have pro wrestling. Oh. Uh, Okay. Yeah. So there's a wrestling rink out there. I know they have martial arts. See that. But see, the, the reason why I like the Arnold is, like, for instance, do you know what day? Uh, do you know what day they do amateurs at the Olympia? Yeah, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, right? Uh, the, See, a lot of people don't know when they do. I don't have to go. I don't have to go to that really one. <laughs> I, bl- I, I even had people in the show. <laughs> exactly, but nobody, everybody's like, "Oh, when is that?" But the I Arnold, it was you know, the Arnold, they like actually advertise it. You know, you know when it is. There's, you know, there's a big clamoring behind it. You can barely get a seat. You know, you everybody's standing up and stuff like that at the at the at the Olympia. You'd be lucky to know when it was. Right, right. Well, um, you know, they, it's, they just advertise things better there. Uh, yeah, well, you know, uh, the Arnold, the Arnold amateur events have been around a lot longer than the, than the uh, Olympia amateur events. So when you look when you when you when you look at that from that perspective, I get it. And, and also, you know, Robin does such a great job with the Arnold with the Olympia and just getting this this amateur this amateur division bodybuilding. Uh, and stuff out the gate so quickly and have it be so successful so fast, I have my hats off to him, really, honestly. So if it's just, and quite frankly, I don't even know if they really need to advertise it because uh, they make, because they seem to be doing a stellar job with it. So maybe, it's maybe uh, most people who want to do it, uh, I don't know. I mean, maybe they could, maybe they could, I don't know. I, I could never, I, I could never find it. So, I mean, like if you look at the, if you look on the Arnold website and everything, you know exactly where everything is. The yeah, website oh yeah. is very good. The Olympia web, web, website is co- kind of co- convoluted. Oh, here we go, I mean, bro. Here we go. I just looked on the list, man. They got foosball. Let's go into the foosball tournament together. Uh, no, I, I, I personally <laughs> think we should go and we should take Juan. If Do Juan handball? Is there, I know Juan's gonna be there, and, and go and see handball and see if, if, if see if he can actually compete still. He, when I talked to him on my show, uh, we talked about it. I'm like, wow, he said he was so disappointed when he tried, when he, as he got bigger, he tried, and then one year he went out somewhere, I think it was after, and he had gotten a lot of, quite a bit bigger, and he tried to play, and he just couldn't. He's just too big. He's like, man, just too big. So he was very disappointed that he couldn't play. Otherwise, you could pull something, you could tear something, because you got to get around that court too, I guess we said. Oh, but, yeah. You really have to be, and he just, you know, I'm just too big now. I'm like, all right, but still, like, I'm not small, and you're not small. We'll be three oafs together, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it, it, it's, it's almost like asking you to play hot high life, you know? Oh, God, fuck. That is a, I grew up in Las Vegas, and that was really, they advertised that a lot. Um, highlight the world's fastest sport. That's what they used to say, and you people die in that shit. Yeah, exactly. That that well, highlight thing hits you in the head. In Florida, and it's it's amazing. It's an amazing. The sport. ball travels like a hundred miles an hour, man. Yeah, it's like well, you, it, you know, they, they when when we used to go to Florida, they used to have all of these places where you could play, and now there's not one place. Why it died out after oh. like the eighties? You used to see it when I remember watching uh, Miami Vice. And yeah, they would show a little blip. Yeah. 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 Here's they, another. They died like right after Miami Vice died. Oh. <laughs> well, you know, they were keeping it a lot. They were keeping it a lot. I'll tell you the thing I really want to do. And this is, my brother has been doing it. And uh, my twin brother. And he said, it, he said, Ted, you got to do it. He's really good at it. So I know if he's good at it genetically, we usually are the same when it comes to intellect and also physical, is axe throwing. Fuck, I want to do this. Oh, oh, Okay. I got the perfect place in Ohio. We're gonna go axe throwing. Really? He said it's so yeah, much no, fun. I got the so much place fun in Ohio. Oh my God! Yeah. They got they got like, 
it's just, I mean, he's like, he, he has a pair of, he's got throwing axes and a target at home. Oh my God. And he's like, he said, you know, he said that when all the, the sprints come over, they do this. And he said, I'm always, I'm, he goes, I can hit that center, man. He's like, I'm always crushing everybody. He said, I didn't know I was going to be so good at it. And uh, he just something he really liked. And so one of our friends that we grew up with, he uh, bought him a pair of axes and he's like, so he starts doing it all. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, I think. Actually, you know what we should do? We should do a segment of where to go in Columbus, Ohio. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Food you know, and axe throwing. <laughs> yeah. We'll, 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 I will definitely take you to I've, – I've spent far too much time in Columbus, Ohio uh, this year. Um, even th- I mean, I love Columbus. I, I really like it a lot. I know you don't like cold weather. I do love cold weather. I know. You're, and, you're, uh, you're, like, you're like the only dark Eskimo that I know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and there are not that many of us. You know, <laughs> you know, I mean, even the Canadians that are black that live in Canada are like, man, bro, you're, you're crazy. You're nuts. I, I love it. I mean, when it was like negative five, I was like, woohoo, negative five. <laughs> well, then you should have been here a few weeks ago when that sucker, when this sucker around here got to negative 30 with no, the wind I, chill. I oh, my God. No, yeah. I, I wasn't going anywhere. I, in fact, I got out before the vortex. Okay, you know, well. I, I didn't. Yeah. I was here. But it was cool, though. I, it was like an adventure for me. I'd never been anywhere like that. So I could truly say for the first time in, uh, in my activity, I could say the first time in my life that I lived in the coldest place on earth at one for one day. On that day, on that one day it dropped that, that low, I, it was negative, I think, 30. And I was, I lived, it was colder than ice, Antarctica, colder than Siberia, but only for one day. Um, <laughs> but but did, you, did you go outside? I did. I did. Do you know what the impimba effect is? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I did the impimba effect with my the my glass of water, hot water, and I chucked it in the air. I didn't put it on. You, you must have saw it. Yeah, I, I did saw it. that. Did, didn't uh, didn't your girlfriend's mother or somebody do one better? Yeah, somebody yeah. Did one better. My, my girlfriend did. She she was at work that day, and she man, she's a doctor. She manages a, uh, a clinic, and so she went out back and with a bucket of hot water, and she chucked it over her head. And it looks like a, a fan of ice. Yeah. Just, oh, whew, awesome. Yeah, it was yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, yours look really bad. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, well, you know, I did mine. I did mine pretty early, and I just kind of like. I would, yeah. I wanted yeah. the bubbles. I wanted to do the bubbles. You know, you blow the bubbles, and the yeah. bubbles will go out and they freeze, and then after a couple of seconds, they just. <laughs> but they'll literally freeze in midair and just sort of float there, like this ice bubble. I was like, oh, that's cool, man. <laughs> well, you know, I was in uh, Columbus uh, for on Super Bowl uh, Sunday. Oh. And um, it, it was one of the few times that in, in Columbus they didn't de-ice the street. And the reason why they didn't do it was because they were afraid that if they they had all of that snow and de-iced it and the snow melted a little while, it was going to freeze the next oh. day. And so it would just freeze again, right? So they decided not to, to you know, do anything and treat it. So a friend of, a friend of mine's, uh, he came to pick us up for dinner and he came to pick us up in a brand new, a, a brand new, uh, Mercedes, one of those M, uh, AMGs or something like yeah. that. It was the AMG. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the beautiful car. Right. And I'm thinking to myself, there is no way in hell I would have my like luxury model car out oh, yeah. here in vortex but whatever dude that's your car right <laughs> so we, that was the only way we were going to like actually leave the house other than like with uber so we actually went to a restaurant and you had to cross the walkway and the only way you can t- you can always tell somebody who doesn't normally live in the winter time in, in a winter area because they walk on ice when they pick up their feet they literally pick up their feet to walk, right? Right. The best thing to do is to slide. Oh, you know, right, right. So you don't fall. <laughs> and slide. Exactly. Little step. But that just makes me nervous, man. And, I, I don't do well with ice. Yeah, see, that's because you, you didn't grow up in ice. But grew up in so Vegas. Funny because, <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny. We were watching people cross the street, and you'd see these people just fall on their asses. And they, they just look like, I've they seen this. Like, I've seen this. Like, they look like drunk penguins it's hilarious well i did do last year i did do try to do a little bit of ice skating we went to here in chicago during the winter time uh, and uh if it feels anything remotely close to that i was not designed to be on ice fuck that shit i was not designed to be on ice i was like i went to the right to the edge crawl over got, took i was i was literally on the ice for five minutes then i went back took my shoes off 
got down, put my shoes back on, turned in my skates, and sat there and watched my daughter and my girlfriend skate for the rest of the for another I was going to say, Suni and your daughter must be good. Um, Suni's very good. Uh, she could skate on, on the ice because she's been doing it since she was, you know, since she moved here when she was like 11. Uh, but uh, uh, my daughter, um, she's, a, you know, she's she can do it for the most part and she was ha she was out there cruising around but i just man you got like me man you get if you fall it's gonna hurt okay it's gonna yeah. something's gonna break okay i'm sorry it's gonna break man and i was like man i do not need to pull a muscle i do not need to rip something i do not need to break something not my idea fine <laughs> so so that's like me and uh, uh my ex uh decided that for my birthday a couple of years ago he was like oh for your birthday we're gonna do something different and uh he ended up taking me uh, to salsa. Uh, uh, okay, that sounds fun. That sounds fun. Uh, no, uh, <laughs> no, it was not fun to me. Not at all. No, it was, it, it was not fun at all. I was there for all the five minutes, and I was like, yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a Cuban restaurant right next door. I'll be over at the Cuban restaurant. <laughs> I would love to learn how to ballroom dance and especially salsa dance because I'm a, I, so they say, and I'm gonna admit it, I, yes, I am a good dancer. I'm everybody who dates me and they always are surprised. And then when I go to a club, uh, like when I was going to college, I was the dude on the pedestals. Like that's what I did. Like I just love dance. It's like the, uh, the it's very free. It's very, I, I feel so so com comfortable and natural. And, so, and every, when I go to Olympia and, I have, and we go after the, I usually will try to go dancing, uh, you know, with my partner afterwards because I wanna like, I want to express myself, but I would love to learn. I don't know how to do any kind of formal dancing. So right. it's just all me moving to the rhythm, me, me finding my, my, my frequency and just going with it. Right. And, um, and it's, and it's so much fun, but I would love to, I would love to learn how to salsa. So I, all of the South American salsa, that kind of, that style is the music. I love it. It's awesome. It's like high vibration music, man. It sounds good. Dude, dude, I was your partner last year. We did not go dancing. You no, know, I told, I asked you. You said no. Nah, when you were tired, I said we can go. Go. We usually go to. There's like an after party, and so. Oh yeah, know. that's right. You did. Uh, that's right. I and you were tired. You yeah. Like, you, yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you had that sinus thing going on, and it was okay. Yeah. Like, um, I mean, you know, it was okay. But normally, that's what I would do: take a night and go there and like dance. You know, some of the club. Well, you know. Go I ahead. mean, historically, what we normally do. I know you. I know you can cut a rug. You said you could. Well, yeah, at the Arnold. After the Arnold, we usually go to Axis, which is the gay, the gay nightclub. Oh, it is. Party down. <laughs> party down. Well, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, you know that. that you, I'll tell you. When I lived, when I lived in San Francisco, I had lots of friends, lots of gay friends, and I and I liked going hanging out with them because. I mean, I would take my girl, my, my wife or my girl, but but um, I loved hanging out with them because they're so much fun. They're, yeah. it's, they're so much the, fun. The music's 100% better. Oh, totally. And the, and the great thing about Axis is this. If you're not gay, nobody's going to come up to you. Like, you right. know, straight men get a little weird when they go Man. by themselves without a date, you know, they need to, you know somebody they need to, to anchor themselves. They need to, I would tell most, gay, tell most homophobes, man, it's not always about you. <laughs> exactly, but, you know, but, but access is you, you know it's almost like they 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 already know that there's going to be a lot of people from the Arnold that could be wandering into you know right, that right. party. Well, you, you know, know, I think it's hey man, I take it as a compliment, man. I've had lots of guys ask me to dance, like hey man, I'm not, I'm straight, you know, I'm good, but thanks, I appreciate it. You know, like I. I I would take it as a compliment, man. Like it's you know, it's just we're just people liking people, man. You know, it's no big deal. I don't care. <laughs> I, I take it as a compliment all the time. You know, the the first year that I ever went to the Arnold, we uh, we ended up going to this party over the Access because Access said, "Oh yeah, you know, after party for the Olympia." So you're thinking, "Oh man, there's going to be these muscular looking guys who are going to be hot. They're going to have these go go dancers. They're going to be hot. Blah blah blah." The go go dancers, all of them were completely straight. They were hot, but they were completely straight. <laughs> So here we are, you know, the, the, the place is packed and all these women come in with their husbands. Right? <laughs> and so this woman, this, she is drunk as a skunk and she is like looking at me and she's feeling my arms. You're and, like, hey, sweetheart. And I'm looking at her like, oh, no, her boyfriend is right next to me. And he's looking at her and everything. And she's like, she's saying all sorts of like very sexy Nasty stuff. stuff. <laughs> And my my ex, who was my boyfriend then, was looking right at me, and he was just kind of like looking at her like, like you lost your mind, right? And then all of a sudden, Tad, out of nowhere, she falls. Oh, was she drunk? And I step back. 
I step back. I don't even, I don't even like pick her up. I just step back because her boyfriend is like right, you know, right next to me, right? And I'm thinking, oh my god, I am the only black man in this, in this whole place. They're gonna think that I'm, I'm, I beat this woman up. <laughs> so I put my hands up instinctively and step back. And so her, his, her boyfriend picks her up and says, "What did you do to her?" And I was like, I my hands are up. I had nothing to do with this woman at all. And he finally got out of my face and like, like took his girlfriend, but it was really funny. What happened to her? Huh? She was, she was was so drunk. It was ridiculous. So she just passed out. uh, Literally Tad, she was feeling me. I've never been felt up like that. before. (laughs) Oh my God. It was so uncomfortable. And it, normally, when women come on to me and everything, I think it's it's very flattering. I'm I'm always flat. You know what? I'm always flattered with anybody. Like, yeah, you know, find you attractive. Thinks that I'm attractive. So it, it wasn't that. It wasn't like oh, a woman, yeah, right. or anything like that. It was the fact that that girl felt me at every, and I wouldn't put my hands on her at all. I was just trying to ignore her, and Dan was looking at her like. You know why? Why are you feeling up my boyfriend? You know that sort of stuff and everything. But I mean, but it was hilarious when she like dropped. You know, at first Dan said, at first she, you know, because she was like, you know, touching me. She was like, it's like I was wondering if she was doing something lewd, and then all of a sudden I realized she was, she was flat on the floor. <laughs> you know? now, that kind of reminds me. I, I have a I, years ago. Uh, this was not affiliated with any bodybuilding event, uh, but I was in Vegas on a business trip, and so I went. But and I, we, I, and of course, I was maybe thirty-three, so I was like, "Let's go to some clubs." So I, me and my buddies, and so we went there, went to a club, and me and a couple of my friends, two of my buddies, and we. Uh, so these, and I just wanted to dance. I just, and I was, I had just gotten a divorce, and I wasn't dating anybody, so um, I. Uh, so I go into this club and it was, man, it was an awesome club. We were dancing and it was off the strip. It wasn't even in one of the, it was before, this was probably like 2003 and 2004. And um, I, um, and there was this really, really attractive, she was, she's probably like maybe half black, half white, something like that. Cause she's like, she had this really wonderful complexion and uh, she starts talking to me and she's, oh, you want to dance? I said, oh yeah, that'd be awesome. Let's go dance. So we go, so we start dancing. We dance like a couple hours. And she's impressed with my physique. She rips my shirt open. She's like, oh, wow, I got it. But she's like, look to her friends. Oh, look, I got a bodybuilder over here. She's like, and her friends are like, ooh, ooh. And, go, and, I'm, and, my, and so my buddies are like, hey, we're going to check out. We're going to head out. You're going to be good? I'm like, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. So I'm sitting there. They close. We close this club down. She's like, don't go anywhere without me. She goes, you have a hotel room? And I'm like, well, yeah, of course I do. I'm like, and, and I'm like going, then, then she's like, I'm going to go use the restroom. I'll be right back. And I'll be ready to go. And I'm like, and I think to myself, uh, I think she's a hooker. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm like, yeah. I didn't, I, I just bought her one drink and we danced and we had fun. And then I just thought I'm going to my room. Now, granted, mm-hmm. if I was like anybody else, I probably would take her back to my room, but I got so scared. <laughs> I just took off. <laughs> I'm like, I do not want to be with a hooker. I'm sorry. I do not know where you've been lady. <laughs> exactly. Well, but she was, about, like, she was so fine though. She was really hot. <laughs> yeah, but the thing about Vegas hookers is that one, if, if you're if you if you're being picked up that way, normally, you know, you could get to the room and she knock you over the head, you know, or anything could happen, you know. So, uh, well, I uh, I definitely got it. Was just I mean I, that's not my style. I just wanted to dance, and she was very very she was very uh, attractive, and she was really nice. Uh, but it was just kind of funny. I. I that was my only, I remember I walked, I bolted and I walked back to my, I was at the state of the Bellagio, man. I was, and then we were, it was probably like a 10 minute walk. I was there in five minutes. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. I, I've, I've gotten myself into like a predicament like that before where this guy was like all over me and I'm like, man, I must be the crap today. I, mean, I, must look great. I know I felt pretty good with myself. <laughs> guy, I was like, man, I must be a stud. Just, I mean, this guy was hot. Your money was though. And I'm thinking to myself, that, you know, you know, I, I am going to get lucky tonight. You know, that sort of thing. And a friend of mine comes over and he goes, Hey, you know who he is, right? And I'm like, I have no idea who he is, but I'm about to know him in a few minutes. And the guy says, you're not going to know him unless you pay him $300 an hour. Oh, wow. 
I had no idea. That, I mean, I, I mean, apparently I am not up on my escorts, but I should have been <laughs> because he was an escort. See, you know? well, that just shows you how naive we are. That, that's just not the kind of deal that we do. So <laughs> Exactly. Because I'm thinking, wow, you know, my cologne must be. You're like, I'm on eight. point, baby. I'm on point this week. <laughs> exactly. I'm like that extra, you know. That extra cardio that I did, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, all right. Well, six pack is rep, <laughs> Well, we will, we will, we'll, we'll, we'll watch ourselves in Columbus when we go. <laughs> we'll see. Um, all right. Well, this is that's going to close it up for this episode. We're going to close this up. We just did an Arnold review with a little fun at the end. Um, we will, we will do a couple. Maybe we'll do a couple interviews. Um, at the at the Arnold, we'll definitely shoot some video because I'm, I got this green screen that's coming with cool lighting for my office for my for for video so that I could put it in here and I can do when I, when I do this I can put things on the green screen so uh, it'll be interesting. I want to try to do different videos, more content this year is my is my whole uh, uh, my whole push. So let's shoot lots of video. We'll have lots of fun at the Arnold. Um, and you're competing. You're looking pretty good. We're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna get. Through. You sound like you got another cold, man. Don't tell me you got a cold. No, 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 this is allergy. Oh, okay. This is totally allergy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was like, man, don't tell me you had a cold. Um, no, no, no. You got to push hard this next week. You got to push hard this next week. Um, yeah, no, all right. No, no allergies. Yeah, I'm getting ready to take allergy medicine after I, like, get up. And then crash out for the weekend. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks, Nigel. We will. I will talk to you probably tomorrow or the next day for, for sure. <laughs> awesome. I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks. And, uh, thanks for having me. Handle your high with Daddy Yoshi.